Sometimes we want our D-type flip-flop to ignore the clock. So remember, in general, at the rising edge of the clock, the flip-flop will photograph the input at D and then set Q equal to that photograph. Then if D subsequently changes, Q will not change until the next rising edge of the clock when the process repeats. If we want to sometimes ignore the clock, it might be tempting to actually put in a logic gate in here so that we literally just feed in a zero here rather than the clock signal when we want to ignore the clock. For example, we could do the following. We could have an AND gate here. When clock enable is a zero, then it doesn't matter what clock is, we will have a zero coming out here, and so the input to the flip-flop, the clock input here, will always be a zero in such a case. Hence, clearly, we don't respond to any rising edges of the clock here because they don't get past the AND gate. If the clock enable is a one, then the output here is going to be a one, if and only if clock is a one. So effectively, when clock enable is a one, clock flows through and into here. So this might seem like a good idea, but in fact it is a very bad idea. And the reason for that has to do with timing and the fact that on the FPGA board there's different internal wiring for clocks and for ordinary logic signals. When we implement our digital circuit, we the canonical form is that we've got a flip-flop followed by some combinational logic, followed by another flip-flop. And we've got lots and lots of these throughout our circuit. And it's quite important that all the flip-flops receive their clock at the same time. So when the clock rises, ideally every flip-flop sees the same rising edge of the clock at the same time. By having this AND gate here, then when this rises, there's going to be a physical delay before the output rises because no AND gate can do a computation infinitely quickly. Moreover, the inside the FPGA there are dedicated wires for clocks that are special. They've got a thicker wire to allow for faster transfer. They're, they're arranged in special ways to try to get the clock to arrive at different flip-flops at the same time, etc. If we add a lookup table, it means we have to go from a clock line into a lookup table using an ordinary wire, out of the lookup table using an ordinary wire, and then into the clock of a flip-flop. Yes, it can be done, but it's a bad idea to do it. Adding to that is that if you do it this way, then Quartus might not know to take the correct protections to avoid against metastability as well. So if this clock enable were to change at the wrong time, then we might get a funny clock signal coming in here, and that might cause some problems too. Regardless, a better way exists, so we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to start again. Here's our flip-flop again. Here we have a multiplexer. If the input to the multiplexer on the select line here is a zero, then it's going to select the upper input here to the multiplexer to go out the output. If clock enable is a one, then it's going to select this lower line to flow through to the output. And this, if you like, is the actual D pin of our extended flip-flop. How does this work? Well, if clock enable is a one, then the input D just goes through to the actual D and so the flip-flop functions normally. If clock enable is a zero, then that means that the output of the flip-flop is being fed around to the input to the flip-flop. So at the next rising edge of the clock, yes, the flip-flop will still photograph its input, and it will still transfer that to the output, but because the input already equals the output due to this feedback loop, then the output of the flip-flop is going to stay the same. So therefore, by using a multiplexer in this fashion here, we can implement clock enable for a flip-flop even if the chip doesn't have its own clock enable pin. Now, most of the time, flip-flops do have their own clock enable pin here, and we can use that directly. 
Nevertheless, sometimes when you want to use clock enable, Quartus decides to draw it this way in the RTL viewer, and occasionally it will sometimes even implement it like this. So it's good to be aware that this represents a clock enable functionality for a flip-flop.